Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. It's the first broadcast of the month, so I'm going to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you wish to, to click the notification bell, give it a tinkle if you wish to be alerted of my broadcasts. And for those of you that ask, my tip jar privy purse is also linked in the description box below if you wish to treat me to a trinket or a cup of coffee or a treat from the charity shops. I thank you most sincerely to anybody who has done so and I broadcast 19 times in the previous month and when I reminded you to subscribe at the beginning of last month a thousand of you did over a thousand overnight which took me by surprise so I'm going to do that reminder as I'm doing now just on the first broadcast of every month so as not to annoy you and I think that's fair don't you just once a month so that bit of housekeeping out the way we have a hussy in the house and it's rather reassuring to see. Yes, Sue Hussey was tiptoeing her way into Buckingham Palace yesterday. Uh, this is all surrounding rehearsals and preparations for the coronation and Queen Camilla's grandchildren were there. And then today we see the rest of the family, senior members congregating, the king looking very jolly, the little children looking a little bit apprehensive, I thought. It's a big day coming along. Charlotte, of course, has just turned eight years old and her mother and father shared some images from Kensington Palace, which were a tonic, weren't they? A tonic to see. And William was also busy as the Prince of Wales greeting the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Chris Hipkins, at Windsor. So a lot going on there. I noticed, well, it's a sunny day today and it was sunny at Westminster Abbey. Nice spring day. For those of you that are attending the coronation, you've probably seen the forecast. It's a little bit grim. They're forecasting a mixture of showers, especially towards the afternoon but also some sunny spots as well. The late Elizabeth's coronation was similarly grey and splashy, as was her father's, King George VI. So it isn't usual for a coronation to be that sunny. We get all kinds of weathers at all, at all times of year. You've seen how glorious the kingdom can look when it is bathed in hot, sunny climes, which I don't actually personally enjoy anyway, but I appreciate the beauty of it. The Sussex wedding was absolutely beautiful and glorious with that sort of Camelot-esque wind up to the castle and St George's Chapel, beautiful. And at the late Diana Francis's funeral, that was also hot, hot, hot. Uh, so yes, you do get those sunny days, but a lot of the time you do get the typical, as they say, British squally weather, but we will see. Let's just hope it's not a torrential downpour. I think that would be the most heartbreaking event. You know, it's not going to be bitterly cold at this time of year. It should be uh, fun regardless of the weather. So uh, my good thoughts are with you. And you know what? When the late Elizabeth died, there were all sorts of funny things going on with the weather, weren't there? Double rainbows, triple rainbows, uh, shards of light appearing over the coffin. So perhaps she can have a word in the big boy's ear up there, eh? Because, you know, the divine right of kings and queens, who knows? She might be able to arrange some good weather. I wouldn't be surprised, I would not be surprised if, she, if uh, she sends a few sunny rays her son's way. Uh, some of you have asked what merchandise I brought in preparation for the coronation. Well, very little, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't really get into all that, but having said that, I did treat myself to one one thing and then a few bickies. Uh, behind me are the biscuit selection from Fortnum and Mason. Some of you will have seen this. Fortnum and Mason have done a lovely collection. Uh, it's a musical biscuit tin that plays God Save the King and swivels round. If I don't show it to you today, I'll show it to you in a tip jar corner in future or something. But uh, that was £35, which was actually a lot. It's a beautiful, beautiful tin. I was excited about it because I thought that I could use it for storage, but actually it's not practical for storage because half of it is taken up with the mechanics of the carousel effect. So I wouldn't have bought it if I'd have known that, so I'm not recommending it to you. And the biscuits were very lovely, but you can buy lovely biscuits anywhere. So I'm not especially recommending it to you. I know that I have this sort of weird influence of power where you all go and rush out and buy everything that I mentioned. Well, I'm not especially recommending it or dissuading it. Do, do as you will, my dear, but don't do it at my behest. But they have some lovely things. The Royal Collection site, uh, the official Royal Collection had some gorgeous things, gorgeous. Such good quality and such good value. This is the thing. And even their non-coronation wares that they have all year are just fabulous everything full of whimsy there was a, one collection of biscuits on there called the biscuiteers which put me in mind of us my dears you know and my basketeers my fruit basketeers yes the biscuiteers collection i think they've been watching the broadcast dears 
they had that uh, they had so much I plumped for because I thought I'm going to treat myself to one thing and I treated myself to this teacup and saucer which I think is a fine fine blue uh, I won't be drinking tea from it though I only drink uh, well herbal teas throughout the winter and then perhaps I'll have a refreshing cup of tea either Builders or Earl Grey in the summer I find them quite refreshing in the summer here and there but most English people don't drink tea much anymore at all even the regular what we call Builders tea I mean it's still popular but we have a cup of coffee like most people these days I have one cup of coffee a day and sometimes I'll be taking a sip uh, from there I don't believe in putting them in a big glass cabinet or anything and waiting until they increase in value in, in 60 years time and you can sell them for double the price no my dear I'm just going to use it abuse it and if it breaks it breaks my dear but uh, I will enjoy supping from it in the meantime so yeah I got the cup I got that I also this red throne that I've had beside me for a while the king cipher on that was also from the royal collection website I think that sold out now as well and I also got uh, the same thing as a decoration of uh, the royal orb so I'll show you that some point in the future as well so a few fun things those websites also the Highgrove website is worth looking at for the Coronation Collection as I say Fortnum's do a lovely selection of goodies all inspired by the Coronation Westminster Abbey I think has a rather more formal collection but very nice wonderful things you can find absolutely wonderful uh, whimsy pure whimsy wonderful some of you will have watched Charles R the making of a monarch uh, recently that was aired via the BBC uh, and I thought it was very moving. I enjoyed it. It was a happy hour. I would recommend it to you. I mean, nothing revelatory, a few new photographs, I think some new footage, but it was just, uh, you would be very hard pressed to come away from that documentary montage sort of affair. It's just a montage with Charles's voice throughout the ages uh, in various clippets. You'd be hard pressed to come away from that and have hard feelings towards Charles. He's a sweet, affectionate man. He really is delightful but uh, he was a sweet gentle natured boy of the wildflowers and the meadows you know very much inspired by the late Elizabeth Beauzelard you know the queen mum and uh, yeah and he also spoke affectionately they showed clips of him with the young Harry the young Henry of Wales and he was speaking about what an adorable baby he is and it's such a pity such a pity that none of this was pointed to within Harry's tone uh, very little affection uh, pointed out towards his father yes we know your your mother's son your mother's son Harry is always going and prattling on about that well uh, you know you, you are the son of both of them and he was a demonstrative caring affectionate father and that was made clear in this documentary as well so I thought that was very selective of Harry actually but yeah it's worth watching if you get to see that another thing that you might have seen especially my Canadian fruits was an interview with Princess Anne uh, via CBC and Aria gave me a question. River, have you seen the amazing interview of the Princess Royal on CBC News? It's incredible to see her share such intimate memories. It brought tears to my eyes. Not a fan of the spin they put on it, but Anne stayed true and stoic. Oh, she is, isn't she? She really is. And there was a little bit of spice in there, especially towards the end of the interview, which I enjoyed. Again, this is available on YouTube. Just type in Princess Anne. CBC interview you'll find it dears uh, it was wonderful though she really is sterling she is really really sterling love her and she's beautiful she's beautiful in the press they made it up a bombshell interview about you know this bombshell kind of affair uh, because she stated that she doesn't really agree with slimming down the monarchy well of course she didn't cast any aspersions towards Charles whatsoever she's very respectful would never be anything less than respectful but it was quite reassuring for us because we're often told and we often uh, repeat including myself that Charles has this vision of a slimmed down monarchy but I've always made it clear that's what we're told we've never actually heard the king say himself I would like to have a slimmed down monarchy it's just it's not cricket it wouldn't be cricket to say in such uh, vulgar terms and he hasn't said that but it was quite reassuring to see from her point of view she said that you know she doesn't think that it would be a good idea from where I'm standing she said and so it implied to me from watching her reading between the lines that that was not the discussion that had been had between she and her brother, no matter how some of the press is spinning it. And she also suggested that that phrase, the slimming down, was used years ago when the royal family was a lot larger and there were a lot more characters that might have been seen as superfluous or indulgent to uh, 
necessitation. So, yes, it seemed to indicate that that is not the current attitude, you know. It would not be practical to sim it down any more than it currently is, especially when you have the Duke of York in the situation he has regrettably found himself in, and the Sussexes out of the equation, and in fact uh, responsible for attacking the monarchy and causing uh, really quite irreparable harm and damage to it. And a lot of the problems, a lot of the controversy that uh, you will also see reported this week, you know, people trying to break into the palace, people casting aspersions, holding up neon signs, you know, not all of the Republican movement here, you know, for a republic, not all, I'm not placing all of that blame on Harry's shoulders, of course not, that would have come regardless, but a lot of the disparagement, a lot of the, you know, darling, the nasty business, all the undertones of what England stands for, all this, and a lot of disparagement comes directly from Harry. Yes, the enemy was within all those years, all those years the enemy was within, and I, I think they kind of knew it, as time progressed through the teen years, they kind of knew it. Very, very sad. He owes them an abject apology. He really does. Let's just hope he doesn't make some kind of stand by storming out during the coronation when the Queen is anointed. Can you imagine? I am hoping that they are positioning him not just behind a candle, but behind some massive font or some... He, he needs his own screen. He needs his own screen made because I don't want him on camera. I think that's something they should discuss before he attended. I don't want his. I don't want to see his expressions going on during all the ceremonial stuff. No, I do not, my dear. Okay, River, don't get exercised. Don't get exercised. No, this is a royal week. But yes, she showed reassuring confidence, didn't she? Did Anne? And little bits of spice, as I say, towards the end of the interview on the subject of slavery. And yes, I was worried, you know, and I, I read the reports about Charles commissioning people with an agenda to look into the monarchy's ties to slavery, this kind of thing. You know, I couldn't believe it when I saw some of these headlines in the paper a few weeks ago, because the people that he, or I should say the woman, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, that he has commissioned to look into these, these links, has a stated agenda all over her social media. Uh, she has, she already has an opinion and has already made it very clear that she thinks there should be reparations and apologies and all this kind of thing beforehand. So she's hardly going into, going into it unbiased. But the Princess Royal said, I rather suspect that was the media's interpretation of that particular deal. And she said, a historical perspective may be more realistic goes back a lot further. And the modern contexts are very different. Slavery hasn't gone away. No, come on, come on, she said. Don't be too focused on time scales and periods. History isn't like that. And it's worth watching my dear as well, because she says it, not in a frosty way, not in a dis disrespectful way, but very, very steely, very steely. It was reassuring to see. And she said that the monarchy provides with the constitution a degree of long-term stability that is actually quite hard to come by in any other way. Exactly, my dear. And the, and the bold truth is that there are many out there disparaging it through other countries, other kingdoms, other what you wills, who are actually jealous, who are actually jealous of our constitutional monarchy. Yes, and the fabulosity of it, because nobody does it better. And because there was no world leader ever as loved as Queen Elizabeth. No, none. 70 years a queen. No greater mourned head of state in history, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, it is stability that is hard to come by in another way. I believe that there is a genuine benefit, she says, from this particular arrangement. I think it has good long-term benefits and that commitment to long-term is what the monarchy stands for. Well said, my dear. More things to look out for during the coronation are the historic coronation vestments from the Royal Collection Trust that will be used by the King at the coronation service. The King is going to reuse vestments which featured in King George IV's coronation in 1821 and also King George V 
in 1937 and Queen Elizabeth II in 1953, including the Colobium Sindonis, the Super Tunica, the Imperial Mantle, the Coronation Sword and the Coronation Glove. This is the Super Tunica, a full-length long-sleeved gold coat worn under the Imperial Mantle. The Sovereign is invested following the anointing and it is fastened with the coronation sword belt. It's beautifully embroidered with spiral threads which take the shape of leafy stems using the gold work technique. And worn over the super tunica is the imperial mantle, which is more similar in design to a robe and was made for King George IV in 1821. It's the oldest vestment used in the service. It's made of cloth of gold, gold, silver and silk thread, silk, gold bullion fringe and a gold clasp in the shape of an eagle. It's woven with roses, thistles, shamrocks, crowns, eagles and fleur-de-lis and was made in 1821. Here is the coronation sword belt or the girdle. It's lined with dark red silk and embroidered in gold thread with arabesques and scrolls. The gold buckle is stamped with national emblems and a gold clip for attaching the sword of offering in place. This gauntlet or coronation glove is made for the sovereign's right hand and King Charles has decided to reuse the glove that was used for George VI. It is worn to hold the sovereign's scepter during the crowning. It's made of white leather and embroidered with gilt metal thread, wire and spangles in the formation of natural emblems including the Tudor rose, the thistle, the shamrock, oak leaves and acorns. The back is embroidered with a ducal coronet in red velvet, above the coat of arms of the family of the Dukes of Newcastle. The wrist is lined with red satin. The King approved a 6% pay increase for his lowest paid staff, so that's happy news, isn't it? And it's the second time that he has approved a pay rise since his accession to the throne, so... That's got to be going down well at the palace, hasn't it? Reports are saying that everybody is absolutely delighted. And also staff, including cleaners and footmen, are going to receive bonuses of up to £600. So happy, happy news there. And Her Royal Highness Eugenie was trotting around town, Mayfair again, of course. She was at the Audley, uh, a pub, enjoying herself, having some fun. Yes, jollies and hijinks at the Audley. And also she had been seen at Ellie Golding's son's second birthday at the Bluebird Cafe in Chelsea. Do you, it's been years since I've been to the Bluebird. I didn't even realise it was still going, my dears. But yes, it's going. And apparently it's a royal haunt still. Well, yeah, she enjoyed that. And she was also out and about with her sister, Princess Beatrice, together with their bows, with Edo and with uh, Jackie. Oh, it was lovely seeing old Jackie Brooksbank with Augie. Augie, Augie, Augie. Very cute. They both looked cute, didn't they, my dears? And Beatrice, of course, was with Edo and Sienna. Eugenie sporting her blue smock. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily think that they were princesses in action, would you, my dear? It's not really the, the fairy tale version of a princess there taking a common cab. But that's the way. They look happy, and it's good to see them looking happy. They deserve it because they've been through the ringer. And the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh enjoyed a day in Wolverhampton, meeting with communities. At the Big Venture Community Centre, they were greeted by primary school children and officials, and their Royal Highnesses joined the Budget Cooking Programme, Beyond the Food Bank, which involves a six-week programme of chefs teaching clients how to cook nutritious food to take home and share with families. They also looked at the music-based workshops called Beats a Bar, which involve enrichment activities for people in complicated situations, disadvantaged backgrounds, and those who are at risk of gangs and antisocial behaviour. Yes, and at the Royal School of Wolverhampton, they saw choir performances, art projects, and bunting in progress. They also attended a big coronation lunch at the city of Wolverhampton College. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate your company very much and I look forward to seeing you on the next River Broadcast. Stay royal and channel the royal spirit. ta -ra.